This training tape, designed by Hardinge Brothers Incorporated in conjunction with Northfield Precision Instrument Corporation, will demonstrate the basic principles of mounting and unmounting a Northfield Precision Air Chuck on the Hardinge Conquest 42. We'll also cover the correct procedures for mounting and boring out top jaws. Northfield Precision Air Chucks have tolerances ranging from one ten thousandth to ten millionths of an inch. And after reviewing our demonstration carefully, you should be able to produce finished work pieces with gauge block accuracy and with greater productivity. To begin, carefully unpack your chuck from its shipping container or its storage box and check the contents against the packing slip. You should have the chuck, top jaws, air tube assembly, rotary joint, hoses, operating valve, split bushing, molly oil for chuck and jaw lubrication, Allen head cap screws for mounting the chuck and top jaws, a specially made multifunctional Northfield hex head wrench used for mounting and unmounting the chuck, torquing the chuck mounting screws, and mounting and removing the top jaws, loading pins, or in the case of internal chucking of the workpiece, a specially ordered loading ring, and operating instructions. Please read these operating instructions thoroughly and keep them so subsequent operators will have access to them. Examine each item for damage. The chuck, jaws, and adapter should have no nicks, scratches, or dents. This is a precision instrument and should be treated with great care. Notice that the chuck is shipped with the jaws in the full open position to ensure proper mounting. It should also be unmounted and stored in the open position. The air tube should be straight and free of dents. Examine the threads, hoses, and quick disconnects for damage. If the chuck jaws or adapter are damaged in any way, the chuck's accuracy can be affected. Wipe all parts with a clean cloth or tissue. This will ensure that all banking surfaces are free from any dirt or particles that may affect the accuracy of the chuck and jaws. Do not use any solvents. They may cause the chuck to rust. The mounting adapter must be flat with a total indicator reading of one ten thousandth of an inch or better. We recommend that you mount the adapter, then skim face it before mounting the chuck to ensure flatness. This also makes it possible to bore jaws on one machine, take the chuck off, and put it onto another without reboring. Carefully place the chuck onto the adapter and mount it with the six Allen cap head screws supplied. With a light touch, snug down every other screw, leaving the remaining three screws loose. Place a tenth indicator on the OD of the chuck and gently, with a plastic hammer, tap the high spots on the chuck body until you obtain a total indicator reading of one ten thousandth of an inch or better. Then, tighten the screws with the T-wrench supplied. When the wrench begins to twist under the applied force, the proper torque is reached.
recheck the TIR again to ensure the chuck didn't move after tightening. If it has, repeat the mounting process. Remember to use only a plastic hammer and never use any metallic object on the chuck. Now you'll insert the air tube. First, lubricate the tip of the air tube with a light film of O-ring lubrication grease. Now, carefully insert the air tube by putting it through the rear of the spindle. Then, holding the knurled knob, gently screw it into the back of the chuck. The tube has to be firmly seated, but not forced. With the chuck in the full open position, slide the locking split bushing against the rear of the spindle. Tighten the set screw. Then connect the air supply. If the chuck is not in the full open position, connect the air supply first, open the chuck, then mount the split bushing we just showed you. This is a good time to check the operation of the chuck and ensure the air lines are connected properly. At low pressure, approximately 10 to 15 PSI, open and close the chuck and make sure each jaw is moving approximately 50 thousandths of an inch. If this is not the case, Check the air supply, ensure the tube is fully seated, and that the mounting screws are not too tight. Next, you'll bore out the top jaws. Even though the chuck is supplied with the jaws already mounted and ready to be bored, you'll need to know how to mount newly made jaw blanks. Before we mount the top jaws, it's a good idea to number each one. One, two, three, to match with each master jaw which is already numbered. By numbering the top jaws, you're able to take the jaws on and off the same chuck and still maintain repeatability of one ten thousandth of an inch or better. Using a surface plate and emery polishing paper, lightly lap the mounting surfaces of the top jaws. This removes any nicks or high spots that could bind or damage the chuck. You also must determine the air pressure and jaw opening required. Use the guide sheet provided for the air pressure and the diameter of the loading pins for the jaw opening. These will vary depending on each application 